Hello everyone, welcome back to another Media Composer tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at the very basics of how to get footage into Media Composer and how Avid's media management works. So we're going to talk about AMA linking, transcoding, consolidating and importing. This video is for everyone who is new to Media Composer or maybe hasn't worked with Avid in a while and wants to refresh their basic knowledge. All right. First, we're going to take a look at AMA linking. When you link something, you connect Media Composer to the original file. There's no converting happening, no extra files are being created. It's similar to what happens if you drag and drop a file into Adobe Premiere. There are two ways how to link a file in Avid Media Composer. You can either drag and drop it into a bin while holding down the Option key. Or you can right click, input Source Browser and select your file here. This little symbol here tells you that this file is linked now. If I would delete my original file or move it somewhere else, let's do that, Avid would lose the connection to the file. If this ever happens, I can easily link it again. Linking in Avid is a tool to get your files into Media Composer in order to then process them. You normally wouldn't want to work with linked only files unless you are under extreme time pressure and don't have the chance to consolidate or transcode. After linking a file, we can either consolidate or transcode it. In order to understand which option is best for us, we have to understand what native codecs are. I have two sample files here. The first one is a DNX file in a MXF wrapper. It's a perfect example of a file that we want to consolidate. This could be for example a raw camera file or daily from a feature film. The DNX codec is native to Avid and the MXF wrapper is supported by Media Composer. After linking the file, we are selecting it and do a right click and select Consolidate Transcode. We make sure Consolidate is selected, we choose our target drive and click Consolidate. Here we get the chance to either label our consolidated file with .new or label our old file with .old. This is important to pay attention to if we already started working with a linked file because we are deciding here which file is being relinked to Avid's new media. So Avid just automatically created a new folder called Avid Media Files. What just happened is Avid split the video file and the audio tracks and copied them into its own folder structure. This folder is always in the root directory of a hard drive. You can't move it to another folder and you can't rename it. Otherwise your files will be offline. There are a few exceptions, but today I only want to cover the very basics. As you can see, our new files are basically the same file size as before. The video codec wasn't changed or modified. Let's go back into Avid Media Composer and take a look at our second file. This is a perfect example of a file that needs to be transcoded. It's a H.264 codec, so a highly compressed file inside a MP4 wrapper. This is not a professional broadcast standard and therefore not natively supported by Avid. Media Composer has to change the wrapper and the codec in order to move it to its Avid Media Files folder. Okay, let's link this file. We select it, right click, consolidate transcode. We select transcode, our target drive. Here we can choose the codec of our choice and decide if we want to keep the source frame rate or convert to the project frame rate. If your file frame rate matches the project frame rate, it makes sense to select convert. Avid is not actually converting the frame rate, but you get a bigger codec variety to choose from. Okay, let's click transcode. Avid is now converting the codec and the wrapper. Again, we find the new files in the Avid Media Files folder. Here we have the video file and the two audio files. And obviously this time the file size has completely changed. After consolidating or transcoding, you see that Avid is changing the little symbol here. That's the easy way of telling if a file is linked only or actually inside Avid's media file folder structure. Okay, let's take a look at our third example. This is a original camera file in the original camera folder structure. You shouldn't just select the individual clip. It's better to select the folder above the camera folder structure. 
This camera recorded a XAVC codec in the MXF wrapper. We could just consolidate the file if we are okay working with a 10-bit codec and a high data rate. With a powerful workstation and HD files this is usually no problem, as long as you have enough storage. If you want to work with an offline online workflow, you would add the required metadata and then transcode the file. Probably to something like DNX36 or DNXLB. In this case you would definitely want to keep the AMA linked file after transcoding in order to relink later to the camera original. There are a lot more codecs that work natively with Avid other than DNX or XAVC, for example ProRes, XDCam, AVC Intra and so on. The list is long and it's getting longer almost every year. Let's take a look at importing files. When you import a file, Avid is not linking anything, it's immediately converting the file and copying it into the media files folder structure. In order to import, you do a right click, import, and either go to import media or select the source browser again and here select import instead of link. This used to be the only option to get digital files into Avid, but today there's almost no reason anymore to ever import anything. The only files that are still typically being imported are audio files, video files with alpha channels, pictures or placeholders. So a lot of files we're going to overcut at some point anyways. We have a bunch of options when importing for how Avid is processing the colors, the image size, the alpha channel and the audio tracks. After selecting your target drive, you click on import. Media Composer is now converting the file and again copying the converted file into the Avid Media Files folder. The easiest way of replacing the file later with a better codec is by batch re-importing them. Another way of importing is to set up your import settings first. Go to settings, user, import. Change your settings here, click OK, and then just drag and dropping your file. There's one other way of importing files and it's called fast import. This only works with files that have a native Avid codec and match your project settings in terms of frame rate and frame size. This is a bit similar to consolidating the file, but again there's almost no reason anymore to import files. In most cases you want to link first and then proceed with the appropriate method. If you think you might possibly ever have to relink back to your original files, I would definitely go the AMA route instead of importing. Again, there are exceptions like dealing with dailies and things like AAFs, but we can talk about those in another video. If this video helped you, feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel and check out my other Avid tutorials as well. I would really appreciate that. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time.